Hello there and good morning to you. Now, 2001 was a pretty good year for our next guest and his band, The Frames. They had a best-selling album, sell-out tours, rave reviews, and made it to the top 10 album listing in the Rolling Stones magazine. Could it get any better? Well, frontman Glenn Hansard is here to tell us. Glenn, you're very welcome. Good morning right, to you. Thanks, love. Early morning for you. It sure is. Have you been busy over Christmas, or have you been uh, gigging and working? Actually, or? It's been, every single day has been... Uh, We've been we've been very busy. Um, I have uh, the past sort of few months have been have been. I went to Vienna on Stevens's day um, to play a tribute concert to my friend, and I came back New Year's Eve, and then we played New Year's Eve, and then New Year's Day was the first day I had where I got to lie in for a long time, and it was very 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 well needed. We're going to talk about about that friend and that tribute uh, a little later in the interview, but um, you were here when you launched for the birds. Yeah. And you were. This is a record that you were in, that you spent a long time trying to make. Um, you made it on a shoestring. You fulfilled a few dreams with it because you you got you got uh, Steve Albini to produce it. Yeah. But you didn't really know what was going to happen with it, and you didn't really care. You just thought this is the album this band has exactly. been waiting to make for a long time. Yeah. And then you put it out there, and it took off. It, it was crazy. The whole the whole the whole view of making it, our whole idea was that that. For the first time in our career, our hands were on our steering wheel of our own destiny, and it was like, okay, now that we have the chance to make the kind of music we want to make, let's just make it, despite the fact that it might be an absolute flop. You know, if, if I go to, you know, I, I want to die having made one great record that I think is an artistic piece, you know, or, or whatever. And, and, we, and the whole idea with the record was to make, because all, all through our history we'd always been pushed and, and you know, the, our records always ended up coming out as something we weren't very proud of. And I think an, an artist needs to be able to stand up beside his art and he needs to be always able to say, that's mine. And that's, that's the, for me, the only criteria for, for being a creative person at all, is that you can say, this is my work and I'm proud of it. And so, that, so for, for the birds, was, it was a very purposeful move, um, opening up an instrumental having a very quiet record and um, making it in a very specific way and I thought that basically we'd lose half our audience uh, you know I was I mean, we were willing to it well, was well, kind of that didn't happen and, and the critical acclaim must have been just a bonus then it was incredible of... yeah I mean the, the record has the records outsold every other record we've released you know all of them put together and you get to keep all the money this time and that's the, the real beauty of the, of the thing but the, the one consistent thing with the frames all through our history is we've always had an audience which means we've always had patrons and and uh, uh, the irony is that record companies and the, 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 you know, the big glamorous side of, of the business has always let us down. It's always been the one factor that we've never gone on well with, but we've always had an audience. And with an audience and with patrons, an artist uh, doesn't need a, the, the, the business. They, all, because what they have is, because how it works with the frames is we did a bunch of gigs last year and, they, and in the posters and in the emails that we sent to our old friends, we said, we need the money to make a record. Uh, we're going to play four nights in Vicker Street. If you please show up uh, and patronise the gigs, we can make a record. And everybody showed up, and you know, people sort of ba basically backed the band. And, and it really feels, it feels incredible that, that that's just gone from strength to strength because uh, we thought the record would would flop. Well, well, the reason you have the audience is because you did so many live gigs over the last ten years. Yeah, twelve now. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, it's been no, it's been a long, long road, and it's and it's something that in the very, very beginning, I remember when I first started off. I mean, for me, Bob Dylan, Van Morrison, and Tom Waits were like the Holy Trinity, you know. Uh, Leonard Cohen, of course, swapping with Tom every so often, and 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 for me, the, traje the trajectory was always much longer than than making a record and making a record within a. Sp and I remember when we made our first album, it sounded like all the bands at the time, and I remember getting really freaked out in myself about that because I thought music that's made. Music that's made within a time frame, music that's made to, f to fit with every other music that's at the time, always dates fastest. Whereas music that's made with the greats in mind, like the Bob Dylans and the Van Morrisons and the, you know, and the Woody Guthrie's, and, and take it right back, um, I, I kinda, we got really clued into the idea of classicism, as in, you know, when you wear clothes, if you, if you make music, if you do your art, you know, it should always be timeless. It should never be specific to a date. And I think that was where we, with this record, I think, I mean, we really tried to get that right. And I would love if people said, I don't know when that album was recorded. Was it recorded in the, you know, was it recorded in the 90s? Was it recorded in 2000? Was it recorded in the 60s? And hopefully that's only because it means it can't be dated so fast. And I think all good art is Well, it's, it's, 
people have always said in, in the music business that if you if you go uh, looking for for the hits and the money and and the fame that you may very well get it but sure. that it doesn't Absolutely. last for any length of time yeah. well the nature of pop music is it goes pop you know the idea the idea of that 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 actual word is some a bubble rises rises very fast it hits the surface and it Bops, you know, pops, and then there's another bubble right behind it, and that's very, that's that's an absolutely fine way of looking at things. And pop music is very valid, but I've always saw myself as a career, someone who, who makes a career of, of music, you know, like in the traditional sense that that I live in a village and I'm the musician, and that guy's the carpenter, you're the baker, you know, you're the TV presenter, you know, that we all have a place. Well, yes. Do you know what I mean? Within a very small small community, and I think when you look at yourself in that in that place. So my father was a musician and he, he said players are, are players, they, they, they live, eat, sleep and breathe it and sometimes they can't always make a living being a player, they have to go away and be a sure. baker or a carpenter or whatever yeah. but a player will, will be a player to the day he dies and that's the difference between real musicians and people who want to be um, um, pop stars yeah. or you know that who, who are in it because it's a it's a more attractive career alternative than advertising or Absolutely. whatever and you'll still be trundling off down to your sessions when you're 70 years of age Absolutely. you know yeah. half blind and half deaf as he was and still enjoying it listen we, we you've had it, it has it's interesting this year has been a great year for you and then you've, you've had the best of times but you've had the worst of times it's because been a big year. of me yeah. Christopher yeah it's been a very big who's year. your best mate yeah um, I don't really like it's kind of the, the, that it's going to be very hard for you to talk about this very surreal it's very and it's so recent Mick, Mick was on tour um, Mick was in a band called the Mary Janes for a long time and in the last couple of years he set out solo and basically me and him have been touring touring the world as a, as a basically t a two piece um, and uh, about a month and a, about two months ago he went on tour with the Waterboys opening up for them and it was a very 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 important thing for him to do because all the time that we played together it was always me and him and this was the first thing that he got it was funny because we were coming back on the plane from Vienna um, after, after being there together and he said to me Glenn I think I need to play on my own now I think I'm ready to, to go do some gigs on my own and that and we got home and the email from Mike Scott was there the Waterboys tour was in place and basically Mick just went off on tour and, 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 and he he fell over and banged his head one night you know and that was like literally that was it was that simple and all of us are just, I mean, I went to the hospital and myself and Harry and Vaughan, his parents, Donald went to the hospital and we sat there with him for the whole time. Um, and he just didn't come through, you know. But we got a chance to hang out with him, we got to be with him. And, um, you know, we were there with him at the very end. And it was just the most, most incredible thing. We, I had to come home during the middle of the time with Mick and we, the Frames played a benefit gig in Vicar Street to, for his hospital bills because it looked like he was getting better, you know, things were... Things were moving along really well. And when I come home, we were on stage between half ten and midnight playing. And that was at the exact, at the exact same time Mick had given in in Groningen, which makes me think that, you know, he came to the gig or he wanted to be there because we were all in Dublin, sing, absolutely singing him, you know, singing him on his journey. Um, and for me at the moment, I'm just like, I, I'm, you know, I'm walking around and I'm, one minute I'm in tears and the next minute I'm laughing my head off. And it's kind of strange that the sort of overwhelming sense I get is that my friend, his energy goes on, you know, and my, my choice is, as a, as, a, as a friend or as a person, is to, is to see this as a tragedy and to, to fall and to go down or to take his energy on and to keep on charging, keep on charging on with his, with his fire and, and that's kind of what well, I... Well, a friend of mine was at the funeral and um, he, he said it was one of the loveliest days of his life and he said one of the highlights of it was um, that you got up and you did some of Mick's songs. One, one in particular, I think. I don't know, is it the one that you're going to do for us this morning? It's not actually, because the one, the one <clears throat> that, I, that I was going to do uh, for you, I can't because I've got a, a flu and it, it, it would take a lot out of me to do it. It might have been the one he actually did on the show with us last it was year. was Heyday, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, you're going to do Listen Girl for us, are yeah. you? And I think that's, a, that's a, an appropriate way to wrap this up. Glenn, thanks for coming in. Thank this you. is Glenn Hatzer doing a Mick Christopher song called Listen Girl. Oh, listen girl, I might If you ask me very nice I just might tell you the truth Cause you give me love and I like it And charming as you might be Listen girl, you like it too And all of the con kids are looking for joy They're dreaming of playgrounds and toys 
dreams But they're dreaming no more Cause they've been there before And now they just sit and absorb Like when I couldn't get out of bed, babe I could hardly walk Well, I come here to muse, yeah I come here to talk So listen, girl, I might If you ask me very nice I just might tell you the truth And the fluids that held me in my mind A candle in my wake And falling back in time And beer, the willful little town That brightens up my night But who will when I'm wide awake You see, I couldn't get out I could hardly walk Well, I come here to muse, yeah I come here to talk So listen, girl, I might If you ask me very nice I just might tell you the truth I just might tell you the truth.